welcome to science era in this video we're going to be looking at skeletal muscles bones overview fractures of bones and as well as structure of bones let's begin learning objective for today's video is identify the subdivision of skeletal as axial and appendicular four functions three functions of skeletal muscles four main classification of bones then we're going to see the major anatomical areas of a long bone, microscopic structure of compact bone and the role of bone salts and organic matrix in making of bone both hard and flexible. Introduction Here you can see the diagram of axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Skeletal system include bones of the skeleton as well as joint, cartilages and ligaments. Fibrous cord that connect the bone at joints. Skeleton system is divided into two parts, axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. Axial skeleton consists of skull, ribcage and vertebral column, whereas appendicular skeleton consists of shoulder griddle, arm, hands, pelvic griddle, legs and foot. Axial skeleton includes bone that form the body's longitudinal axis and the appendicular skeleton includes the bone of limb and griddle that connect them to the axial skeleton. Joints provide flexibility and allow movement in various regions of skeletons. Let's look at the function of skeletal system. First and the most important function is support. Bones serve as the body's steel grider and reinforce concrete, providing support and cradling for its soft organs. The ribcage support the thoracic wall, while the bones of a leg operate as pillars to support the body trunk when we stand. Protection Soft bodily organs are protected by bones. The fused bone of the skull, for example, offer a compact enclosure for the brain, allowing someone to head a soccer ball without fear of the brain injury. The vertebra protect the spinal cord while ribcage protect the thoracic critical organs like heart. Skeletal muscles allow move, skeletal system allow movement. Allow space for movement, skeletal muscles are tendon attached muscles that employ bone as liver to move the body and its part we can now we can now breathe walk swim and toss a ball blood cell formation blood cell formation or hematopoiesis occurs within the marrow cavities of certain bones storage the internal marrow chambers of bones are where fat is deposited minerals the most essential of which are calcium and phosphorus are stored in bone itself most of the calcium in the body is stored as calcium salt in the bones, but a tiny quantity of calcium in the iron form must be always present in blood for nervous system to send messages, muscles to contract and the blood to clot. Classification of bones The adult skeleton is composed of 206 bones. There are two basic types of osseous or bone tissue compact bone and spongy bone compact bone is dense and looks smooth and homogeneous spongy bone has a spiky open appearance like a sponge you can see in the diagram flat bone consists of a layer of spongy bone sandwiched between two thin layers of a compact bone There are four types of bones in the human body, long bone, flat bone, irregular bone and the short bones. Long bones are typically longer than they are wide. As a rule, they have a shaft with enlarged end. Long bones are mostly compact bone but also contain spongy bone at the end. Flat bones are thin, flattened, usually curved. They have two thin layers of compact bone sandwiching a layer of spongy bone between them. Short bones are generally cube shaped and contain most, mostly spongy bone with an outer layer of a compact bone. 
ones that do not fit one of the preceding categories are called irregular bones the vertebra which make up spinal column fall into this group moving on to the structure of bones here we identify anatomical areas of a long bone describe the microscopic structure of compact bone and the role of bone salts and organic matrix structure of bones the diaphysis or shaft of a long bone is made up of compact bone. Periosteum, a fibrous connective tissue membrane, covers and protects the diaphysis. Sharpest fiber holds peristoneum in place against the underlying bone. Long bones have epiphyses at their ends. Each epiphysis is made up of th a thin layer of solid bone that surrounds a spongy bone region. Its external surface is covered in articular cartilage when covered with lubricating fluid. Articular cartilage is glassy hay-line cartilage that creates a smooth surface that reduces friction at the joint. Epiphyseal line is a narrow line of bony tissues that span the epiphysis in the mature bones. In a young growing bone, the epiphyseal line is a vestige of the epiphyseal plate. Epiphyseal plate are responsible for a long bone's longitudinal development. When hormones stop lengthy bone growth at the conclusion of puberty, just the epiphyseal line remains to show prior location. Endosteum is fragile connective tissue that covers the inner bone surface of the shaft. Red marrow, which create blood cells, is stored in hollow of the shaft in babies, known as the medullary cavity. Children's bone contain red marrow until they are 6 or 7 years old, at which point yellow marrow, which contain adipose fat tissue, gradually replace it. Red marrow is restricted to cavities in the axial skeleton spongy bone the hip bone and the epiphysis of long bones like the humerus and femur in adult bone. Microscopic anatomy of bones Spongy bone is made up of small needle-like pieces of bone called trabecules as well as a lot of open space filled with marrow. Blood vessels nerve as seen under a microscope. Mature bone cells known as osteocytes are found in small cavities called lacunae within the bone matrix in the compact bone. Around the central canal, the lacunae are arranged in concentric circles known as lamella, also called Heversian canals. An ostean, also known as Heversian system, is a structural and functional unit of a compact bone that consists of central canal and matrix ring. Blood vessels and nerves are carried to all parts of bony, bone by central canals that run lengthwise through the bony matrix. Canaliculi, little canals that branch outward from the core canal to all lacunae are present. Through hard bone matrix, the canaliculi forms a transportation system that connects all the bone cells to the nutrient supply and waste removal services. Perforating canals which run in the compact bone at right angle to the shaft and central canals complete the communication pathway from the outside to the inside of the bone. Bones marking Projections that are site of muscles and ligaments atta ligament attachments are tuberosity, crest, trochanter, line, tubercle, epicondyle, spine, and processes. Tuberosity is the large rounded projection, may be roughened. Crest is narrow ridge of a bone, usually prominent. Trochanter is very large, blunt, irregularly shaped process. The only example are on the femur. Line are narrow ridges of bone, less prominent than a crest. Tubercle is the small rounded projection or process. Epicondyle is the raised area on or above a condyle. Spine 
sharp slender often pointed projections and process is any bony prominence you can see all the label structures in the illustration given next is projection that helps to form joint four types of projection head facet condyle and ramus head is the bony expansion carried on a narrow neck facet is smooth and nearly flat articular surface and condyle is rounded articular projection while ramus is the arm like bar of the bone depressions and opening for passage of blood vessels and nerves there are grooves fissures foramen and notch and other include meters sinus and fossa groove is the furrow fissure is narrow slit like opening foramen is round or oval opening through a bone notch is indentation at the edge of a structure meters canal or tunnel like passageway sinus is the cavity within a bone filled with air and lined with mucous membrane fossa is shallow basin like depression in a bone often serving as an articular surface again you can see all of these in the illustration now we're going to discuss the bone fractures name and description of the various type of fractures bone formation and growth skeleton is formed from cartilage and bone in embryo the skeleton is primarily made of hyaline cartilage but in young children most of the cartilage has been replaced by the bone cartilage remains only in isolated area such as bridge of the nose parts of the ribs and joints first hyaline cartilage model is completely covered with bone matrix by bone building cells called osteoblast so as the embryo develops into a fetus for a short period it has cartilages bone enclosed by a actual bone matrix then in the fetus the enclosed hyaline cartilage model is replaced by the bone and center is digested away opening a medullary cavity within a newly formed bone by birth or shortly after most hyaline cart uh, cartilage model have been converted to bone except for the two regions the articular cartilages and the epiphyseal plate for bones to increase in length as the infant grow into a child a new cartilage is formed continuously on the external faces of the articular cartilage and on the epiphyseal plate surface that faces the bone end at the same time the old cartilage abutting the internal faces of articular cartilage and the medullary cavity is broken down and replaced by bony matrix because these two processes occur at the same rate the circumference of the long bone expand and the bone widens let's look at the diagram of bone formation and growth so in the first diagram you can see bone growth in an embryo in the second diagram in a fetus and the last one is a child bone bone remolding bones are remolded continually in response to change in two factor calcium iron level in blood and the pull of gravity and the muscles on the skeleton when the blood calcium iron level drop below its homeostatic level the parathyroid gland release parathyroid hormones into the blood parathyroid hormone activate osteoclast giant bone destroying cells in bones to break down bone matrix and release calcium iron into the blood when blood calcium iron level is too high calcium is deposited in the bone matrix as hard calcium salt by osteoblast bone remolding is essential if bones are to retain normal proportion and strength during the long bone growth as body increase in size and weight it is also account for the fact that bones become thicker and form larger projection to increase their strength in areas where bulky muscles are attached parathyroid hormone determines bone when bone is to be broken down or formed in response to the need for more or fewer calcium ions in the blood the stresses of the muscles pull and gravity acting on the skeleton determines where bone matrix is to be broken down or formed so that the skeleton 
can remain as strong as and vital as possible. Bone fractures. Reduction or realignment of stretched bone end is followed by immobilization in the case of fracture. The physician handcocks the bone ends back into their proper position during a close reduction. Bone ends are held together with pins and wires during an open reduction. The shattered bone is immobilized with a cast or traction after it has been reduced to allow the healing process to begin. A small fracture will mend in 6 to 8 weeks while huge bone and older people's bone will take much longer because of their poor circulation. Stages of bone healing There are four stages of bone healing. Hematoma forms number one number two fibrocartilages calcus forms number three bony calcus form and number four bone remolding remodeling occurs let's look at each step in detail step one a hematoma develops when a bone breaks blood vessels are punctured a hematoma is a blood filled swelling or bruise that occurs Bone cells that are starved of nutrients perish. Step 2. A calcus of fibrocartilages develop. The development of a new capillaries granulation tissue into the clotted blood at the site of a lesion and the removal of dead tissue by phagocytes are two early processes in tissue repair. As a result, several types of connective tissue cells create internal and exter external mass exterior masses of repair tissue which constitute the fibrocartilages cartilage calcus internal and external cal calcus forms from endosteum and periosteum cells respectively and comprom comprise numerous element cartilages cartilage matrix bone matrix and collagen fibers that act to splint the shattered bone and close the gap. Step number three. A bony callus develop. The fibrocartilage callus is gradually replaced by a bony callus comprised of a spongy bone as more osteoblasts and osteoclasts migrate into the area and multiply. Bone remolding take place. The bony callus is reshaped in response to the mechanical pressure exerted on it over the next several weeks to months depending on the size of the bone and location of the break to form a strong permanent patch at the fracture site. Common types of fracture include commutated, compression, depressed, impacted, spiral and green stick. Commuted is, the, is when bone breaks into three or more fragments particularly common in older people whose bones are more brittle. Compression is when bone is crushed, common, common in porous bones, osteoporotic bones of older people. Depressed is when broken bone portion is pressed inward, typically of the skull fracture. Impacted bones are broken bones and are forced into each other. Commonly occurs when someone attempt to break a fall with outstretched arm. Spiral is racked break occurs when excessive twisting forces are applied to a bone. Common spots fracture. Green stick bone breaks incompletely much in a way a gain twig breaks. Common in children whose bones are more flexible than those in the adults. This brings us to the end. Let's look at the summary. Bone support and protect body organs serve as levers for the muscles to pull onto the cause movement at joint and store calcium, fat and other substances for body. Some contain red marrow, the site of blood cell production. Bones are classified into four groups, long, short, flat and irregular on the basis of their shape and the amount of compact or spongy bone they contain. Bone markings are important anatomical landmarks that reveal where muscle attach and where blood vessels and nerve passes. A long bone is composed of a shaft, 
diaphysis with two end epiphyses. Shaft is compact bone, its cavity contains yellow marrow. The epiphyses are covered with hairline cartilages. They contain spongy bone where red bone red marrow is found. Organic part of the matrix make bone flexible. Calcium salt deposited in matrix make bone hard. Bones form in the fetus on hairline cartilage or the fibrous membrane model. Epiphyseal plate persists to provide for longitudinal growth of long bone during the childhood and become inactive by calcifying when aldosense ends. Bone changes in shape throughout life. This remodeling occurs in response to hormone, for example, parathyroid hormone, which regulate blood calcium level and mechanical stresses acting on the skeleton. In the end, we looked at fractures. A fracture is a break in a bone. Common types of fracture include simple compound compression, comminuted green stick. Bone fracture must be reduced to heal properly. This brings us to the end of the bone overview. In the next lesson, we're going to discuss axial skeleton. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe for more.